Hello everyone, my name is Nick Alexander and this is Jonah and the Big Fish in under two to three minutes. So Jonah was a Hebrew prophet in the Old Testament time of the Bible, which meant he would go around different towns talking about the Word of God and he got to wear a cool looking hat. So one in particular day, God tells Jonah, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh, Jonah, a swirling cesspool of crime and villainy and tell them to change their ways. So at this point, Jonah's like, <laughs> right, I'll get on a boat right, right now. And Jonah did in fact get on a boat. The problem is the boat was going to Tarshish and not Nineveh. Nineveh is over here closer to where the uh, like Middle East is. Tarshish is over here closer to Spain. That's like kind of being in the middle of the US and God's saying, I need you to go to Washington DC. And you're like, Oregon, right, got it. So they start their journey and then God sends a storm out to meet them on the ocean. And then the captain of the boat's like, oh God. And then the sailors on the boat are like, oh God. And then all of them look at each other and realize that none of them believe in the same God. So they don't know who's really to blame for why the storm is happening. Jonah then decides to wake up from his nap that he's been taking below deck, which is very impressive given the circumstances that he's dealing with right now that he wants to sleep. It's me, it's my fault, my God is angry with me, I'm supposed to be somewhere else, I ignored him, just, it's my fault, okay? So everybody on the boat says, Great. What are we gonna do about this? My God wants a sacrifice, just throw me into the ocean, okay? Just yeet me into the ocean. Got it, eat me in the ocean. So they throw Jonah into the water and then the storm stops. So Jonah says to the guys on the boat, oh, I guess that was it. That's, that's everything, okay? I guess you guys can let me back on the- <laughs> God, I'm sorry that I ignored you. I ignored you, but you let me live. I'll do whatever you want. I'm sorry I'm your humble servant. And then God says, Yep, all right, that's what I wanted. <laughs> so after three days in the whale, Jonah goes to Nineveh as God commanded, and he tells the people there, You have made God very angry. Stop it. Stop it. Word of this gets to the king of Nineveh. Now, the king of Nineveh did fear God, so he decides to take off his clothes that are really nice clothes and wear sackcloth and commands everyone in the kingdom to wear sackcloth, which I can only imagine is extremely uncomfortable in desert heat. So God can see that the people of Nineveh have changed their ways and they're trying to be more like God called them to be. This is what God wanted. That's why Jonah went to Nineveh in the first place. So he shows them mercy. Now, if it isn't incredibly clear already, Jonah didn't like the Ninevites and didn't like how God decided to show them mercy. What? What? Basically, Jonah's not happy that these people didn't do what God commanded, then they tried to do what God commanded, and that still means that they really should get punished for that. Hmm. So, Jonah decides to go to a hillside to wait it out and just see if God actually does destroy Nineveh or not. It's the desert. It's hot. There's no shade. So God decides to create a plant for Jonah so that he can hide under it and just try to wait it out because he still loves Jonah, so at least it's gonna be cooler now. After waiting a day, Jonah clearly doesn't get it, so God sends a worm to eat the plant so that it falls over and Jonah doesn't have shade. He also makes it very, very hot. At this point, God tries to explain to Jonah that he does love Jonah, he cares about Jonah, but he also cares about the Ninevites. Even though they're not Israelites, God's mercy doesn't just stay with the Israelites. He cares about his creation and he cares about their betterment. Does that make sense? At this point, Jonah's basically saying, ah, I'm gonna kill myself! Wow. I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault! 